doing a buck in the latest drop. I got stopped by a lady cop. She got me thinking I could date a cop. Because the uniform pants are so tight. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Got some great, some crazy, crazy stories for y'all today. Inmates and the female guards. Now, the last place that I had the extreme displeasure of serving time at, I was sent there for behavioral modification. That's what they told me. 99% of the inmates that were there were sent there because they had some type of drug history or because they were what you call a youthful offender, someone that was sentenced to prison time under the age of 18. This place had more female guards and more female counselors than any place I've ever seen in my entire life. Even before doing this video, I was talking to my wife about it and she was like, that is one thing. She used to come see me there. She's like, that's one thing I noticed immediately coming there is there's a lot of women that work here. In doing my time there, I watched God only knows how many women be walked up off that compound. I watched guards be walked to the front and then placed in handcuffs. And in watching all this, I saw firsthand a lot of what was taking place and then I heard a lot of what was going on. Them women up there were getting busy. Dudes were laying pipe a hundred miles an hour, slaying them chicks. Counselor would start her job this week and two weeks from now, some dude would be going to the hole and being shipped off to another compound with some more time added on to his sentence because he's done lost all his good time. And well, either this counselor or this guard would be losing their job. Their families would be notified. Their husbands would be notified. And just like that, it would come to an end. When I tell y'all it always ends bad, messing with a female correctional officer is the definition of that exact statement. It always ends bad. You are going to get caught. I have never, and I say this honestly, met anyone that maintained a relationship with an officer that didn't get caught. So that's what we're doing today. Stay tuned. I have a very special and important announcement to make. With all that being said, you know how to see it. You know how to live it. So, let's relive it. So, if you're new to my channel, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Jay Williams. I'm a YouTuber, a father, a business owner. I'm also an ex-con. Been through a lot in life. Went through a lot in prison. Spent a large majority of my life incarcerated. I now take my story share with you guys in the hopes of helping the next man. Recently, I spoke of a guy that I did time with, a guy that I worked maintenance with at a very bad prison, which was Greensville Correctional Center. This person I'm referencing is a guy by the name of Mark Ezel. Mark just finished up 19 years. Mark was at a party with some other guys when two of the guys he was with attacked the guy that was running the party. One of these guys hit that guy with a pool ball and a sock. They robbed the man. Took an AK-47 style assault rifle and cash. Mark was standing there when this transpired. I know all this to be true. This isn't just some fairy tale I'm telling you. I'm telling you all the facts. The man saw Mark and lights went out. Mark witnessed what happened and the two guys took off. So when the guy wakes up, and it's time to give a statement to the police officers. He never saw the guy that hit him from behind. All he remembered was seeing Mark. Mark didn't tell on the two guys. He figured since he didn't do anything, there's no way he could get in trouble for this. He didn't do it, right? Mark would ultimately be convicted, kind of one of those guilty by association type kind of deals. And he would not see the streets for another 19 years. I picked him up from the bus station last month. We spoke about all this. Gave Mark a job. Mark is a great worker. He has the most gentle soul of any man that I've ever met. 
Mark is more than a friend to me. Mark is like a brother. And Mark, I'm going to have him on the show. I didn't plan on doing it so soon because of certain reasons, but I'm going to have him on the show and it'll all make sense here in a minute when I say why. Guys couldn't understand why I hung out with Mark in prison. I saw Mark as a genuinely good person, which in that environment, it's hard to find people that have good hearts. I don't need to be surrounded by guys that have face tattoos and murder charges all day. Finding a guy that has a good heart and that is just a kind human being in an environment like that is like finding a needle in a haystack. He was a diamond in the rough. We became really good friends. On several different occasions, guys would try to take Mark's kindness for weakness. And Mark will verify everything I'm about to say. I never let that happen. He is a good person. He does have a gentle soul, a good heart. And had, I'm sure there's been times it's been done, but had I not been around on certain occasions, guys would used to try to bully Mark and pick on Mark. And he'll tell you on more than one occasion, I will step up and tell him, pick on me. Try that shit with me. Try that shit you just did with him, with me. Do it with me. And guys would back up. I ended up getting shipped off. I told Mark when I left, him and a couple other guys, you'll hear from me again. When I get out, you guys won't need anything anymore. You won't be alone. He had done his time by himself. Nobody's sending him any money. Nobody's looking out for him. He's in there making 27 cents an hour. So while you complain about what your job pays you, think of this, 27 cents an hour with a maximum 30 hours a week. So your paycheck equals up between 27 to $32 a month. And that's what he survived on. From the moment I got home and I got in position to help, I helped. I kept money on that phone. If he needed something to eat, he needed commissary, and he didn't have to ask, I would send it. Mark got out after 19 years. Thank you for paying attention to listening. This is very important. He got out after 19 years. I couldn't understand why he had to do 19 years to get out. He fought his case pushed him through the actual innocence project and nothing ever happened. He maxed out his sentence and came home. This past week, Mark wasn't feeling good. I have kids. So my policy at work is if you are sick, you cannot work. I'm the boss. I work right along beside my guys. I'm not the boss that sits in the office all day. I'm not the boss you never see. This is not Walmart. I am on the job every day with my men. If you get sick, and I get sick, we're all screwed. Because without me, the show does not go on. I'm the captain of this ship. So I don't let my guys come to work when they're sick. And I know Mark loves me to death. He loves working with me. And you know he couldn't come to work because he was sick. His chest started hurting. They told him he had the flu. He went to the hospital early this morning. Doctors asked him if he had any family there with him. He told him, no. I'm here because I have the flu. Why would I need family? They asked him to take a seat, in which he did. He told him, Mr. Ezell, we're sorry to tell you this, but in your x-rays, we found two masses on your lungs. You have lung cancer. This is a man that's never smoked a day in his life. Never smoked. The gravity of what they told him hit him hard. The gravity of what he told me hit me hard. We're going to get through this. That's what I told him. You're a fighter. God released you exactly when you were supposed to be released. Because had you still been in prison, first of all, your condition wouldn't be diagnosed. It would have been a death sentence. I did a video on guys locked up with cancer that nobody really watched. It's crazy, great video. But I'll talk about Booty Bandits and hundreds of thousands of views. Like I told Mark, you were released when you were released for a reason. Had it been another six months from now, you and I both know what the outcome would have been. By the time they diagnosed you, you would uh, probably not be here. But thank God he is out here and he did get to it and the doctors did find it because now we're gonna start treatment. I'm going to attach Mark's cash app, and this is not a scam. I would never scam anyone for anything. Mark's not going to be able to work the way he wants to work because now he's going to start going undergoing treatment for chemo. 
things of that nature. There's probation he contacted. They've given him a pass. A lot of his family is out of state to go see his family members. Otherwise, you know, a serious thing we're dealing with here. This is lung cancer. But Mark brought up a very valid point in all of this that I hadn't thought about in a very long time. In the prison we worked in at Greensville, there was these chase closets in between the cells. In those closets are the wiring, the duct work, the backside of the toilets. You know, everything was in these closets that are located directly in between two cells. Two cells butt up, there's a closet in the middle. My boss used to tell us there's large amounts of asbestos in these closets. Be careful. This stuff can cause cancer. Us, the inmates, we used to clog our vents. They didn't really blow anything, but you would get this smell that would come from the closets that was like old wet laundry, like old soil, like old books, just dirt and old. That's what it smelled like, which was the mold and the asbestos that had built up in these closets. Mark told me earlier, I think all of this came from when we worked in them closets, Jay. I'm almost positive. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. But here I am, I have lung cancer. And I got to thinking back on it. I had completely forgotten about the asbestos. I've worked with it so many times over the years doing construction since I've been home that I forgot about the long amounts of time that we spent working in those utility closets slash chase closets that were riddled with mold, riddled with asbestos. So once again, that is Mark's cash app. He's not going to be able to work. The man is a beast. He's a hardworking man with a heart of gold. You guys do what you want to do. I'm not asking you to do anything. Just know that that money is going to go towards taking care of him while he's in and out the hospital. It's going to go towards helping him get back and forth to see his family in other states. This is not a ploy to trick anybody. This is the God's honest truth. This is life. Mark lost his top teeth while he was incarcerated. And right after he got out, his dentures broke. Sorry, Mark, I just got to tell the people. I know you're watching. So he didn't want to be on camera with no tops in. So he went to the dentist today. I've got pictures he sent me from the dentist office. And he's in his best spirits. Found out he has cancer, lung cancer this morning. And when he got his bottom teeth cleaned today. And he also got fitted for his top dentures, man. Huh? This dude's in his early 40s. Spent most of his life incarcerated to be told something like that this morning. So if you're one of those people that's dealing with something or you're down and out right now, you're feeling discouraged like your life can't get no worse. I want you to imagine that you just did 19 years in prison only to be told after getting out that you have lung cancer. Walk in his shoes in this moment right now and then look around you at your life I want you to ask yourself, is it really that bad? Not having any money, that's your biggest problem right now? Maybe the light's getting cut off? Disappointing somebody? Letting others down? How about having to fight for your life? And not knowing what tomorrow will bring. Mark, I love you. And any and everything I can do, I'm going to do. You've got me in your corner, man. You won't fight this alone. Marlena, Lance, all the guys that you've met through me since you've been home, we've got your back. And we're here for you. Sorry that took up so much time, but I do know that this portion of the video will make a change in somebody's life. Y'all please keep Marky selling your prayers. With all that being said, man, give me a second to change my energy and let's get into today's video that was not easy to do you're gonna run into some guys with some crazy crazy names in prison I have heard the most ridiculous names you could ever imagine I look at Greensville and there was a lot of situations with guards getting caught doing the nasty guards you would never suspect seasoned Vets, guards that have been working for the Department of Correction 20 plus years. I've seen them coming up on retirement and get caught with their pants down. There's a lot of do's and don'ts when it comes to this. And we're going to run through those. 
But back to the names, I met guys along the way throughout my years of incarceration with some of the craziest names. This one here is about a dude named Capo. I never put two and two together on why they called this dude Capo. Gang member. So I thought, all right, maybe it's got something to do with his gang ties. And that's why they called him Capo. But looking back on it, it's not why they called him Capo at all. This dude looked like Jim Jones, the rapper, dip set, dip set. He looked like Jim Jones with a fade. And I didn't think of that until just a couple of minutes ago when I was thinking back on Capo and his situation and the story I'm about to tell you. I'm like, damn, dude looked like Jim Jones. That's why they called him Capo. Not because of his gang status, not because of none of that, not because of none of his rank, but because he looked like Jim Jones. Capo was an old pretty boy. Like, when I first got to prison, one of the things I noticed was everybody's drip, everybody's swag. Like, certain dudes, you could tell who they were and how they carried themselves out in the real world just by the way they dressed. And I remember asking myself, why are these dudes pressed with looking fresh in prison? There's nothing but dudes in here. This dude's got the fresh Levi's. He's got Tim's on. He's got the gold chains. Some of these dudes still had their grills. Dudes would get visit, you know, stuff smuggled through visitation room. Some guys have been down a long time and you can still buy gold and silver from different vendors in the prison. Some of these dudes stayed fresh, kept a fresh face. I didn't really understand why dudes were so big on being fly while locked up. Didn't take me long to catch on. They weren't doing it for the other inmates. For a lot of us, I stayed fresh. I was gonna smell good, keep my, keep my teeth up to par, keep my head shaved, my beard lined up, my clothes ironed. For a lot of us, that's just who we were. I wasn't a dirty dude on the streets. I had an appearance on the streets. I followed routine when I got locked up. I still tried to stay in character, stay who I once was. But for a lot of these guys, that wasn't the case. They were worried about impressing that woman in the control booth. Now, at the last camp, I talked about this Indian Creek. Like, everywhere I looked, there was a female guard. Or there was a counselor. With this place being behavioral modification, youthful offender, therapeutic community, so many different programs running at this place, we dealt with female counselors all day, every day. If you want to get men's attention, and this is all part of the process now, listen to me. If you want to get a man's attention, put a woman in front of the room. Now they would hire bottom of the barrel up to, wow, I've not seen a woman like that in a long time. With that came a whole lot of fraternizing, came a whole lot of bounce, wow, wow, bum, 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 bum. Dude's getting it in up there. No sooner than I got there, I think it was like my second, third day, I seen them walking a counselor past all of us. The administration, the higher ups, warden, all them, white woman, long brown hair, hourglass figure. Now we're all paying attention to her because first of all, look at her. Like, damn, not used to seeing this. Secondly, she's got people of high power surrounding her. And what's going on with the counselor lady? Whose building is she in? Uh, you ain't used to this yet, huh? Now what's going on? Oh, they walking her up off of here. Walking up off of here. I know what that means. I've been in other prisons. It's like that. Oh man, you're gonna see a lot of that. That's a every week occurrence. These counselors come here to get these jobs because out there where we were at, it's a good job to have. Also, if you want to work with youth or anything like that, you got to have a year's experience on your resume working with inmates. Capo has got all these younger dudes that fall up under him. He has rank within this blood. Capo had pull. Capo was also a pretty boy. He would send these youngins into the visitation room and have them come back with gold chains on, rings on, watches. He stayed 
on top of these female guards and these counselors. Any and every counselor that came in there, this dude would try to holler. Now he also, they have what's called a hierarchy inside the dorm, which is select inmates have a position in there working alongside the counselor to keep peace and awareness to make sure guys are working the program. Capo got on this hierarchy and had one of those positions where he had some rank in there when it came to making things get done amongst the inmates. He could go to the guards and say, hey, we need this. They know his position in there. He works the program. He's part of the program. So they're going to make it happen. Well, with him having that position, he also got to hang out with those female counselors all day long. So if a guard walks by and sees Capo sitting up at the table with a female counselor, they're not going to think nothing about it. That's his job. He works as part of the program as an inmate to help the other inmates come out as better people. Yay, go prison, right? Nobody would think twice about seeing him sitting up there talking with this different counselor, this counselor, that counselor. But the thing about this boy is he had, gee, he had game. He, and he had that swag to go along with it. Pretty boy. Now, let me give y'all some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to trying to bag a female officer, trying to get you a counselor, trying to get next to an officer to do this. Number one, do not go after the pretty one. Do not go after the, the most gorgeous woman that you see in the prison. One, why? Because other inmates are all watching her at all given times. There's some weird dudes. They don't give a damn if she's a dime piece or she's somebody's 93-year-old grandma with a peg leg and a wooden eyeball. To them, that's a female that has different body parts than we do. Dudes do not care. But when it comes to something that you really look at, I'm talking somebody that's just fine, like a woman that's like that, other inmates are going to hate if they see you all boo-booed up, they see you all next to her, sitting there laughing, joking, talking, smiling, and she smiles back, oh, man, dudes are going to want to get you out the picture. Because now, this fairy tale that they've made up in their head of them and her being together and happily ever after, oh, well, you've just interrupted that. So guys are going to do everything they can. Drop letters on you, whisper in guards' ears. They're going to tell on you, and they're going to get you gone. Plus, those women were harder to bag because they got so much attention out here in the real world. They have guys coming out there at them out here in the real world. No, that's not the woman you want to go at, though I have seen some of the baddest of baddest be caught and tamed. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, indeed. No, you want to go after Miss Sloppy Body, Miss Eggplant Emoji Body, Miss No Self-Esteem, just bad life. Like, you don't comb your hair, woman? Like, you don't smell good? That's the type of woman, if you're looking to make moves, you want to holler at. Because her self-esteem is beat up. She may be in a relationship at home where... She ain't been told she's pretty in forever. She doesn't get compliments at home. Now, she comes into the prison, and you got all these dudes working out, swole up on their workout game, and they're staring at her, eyeing her up and down like she's a runway model, complimenting her, making her feel good about herself. That is a woman that in that position, you can take and mold and have her do anything you want to do. And that's exactly what Capo did. Now, we had all these different pretty guards, pretty well, counselors that were coming in at a record rate. They were walking these women up over here, like I told you, at a record rate. So the turnover ratio when it comes to counselors was nonstop. It was like every other day we seen a new counselor coming in. Capo would shoot his shots at the guards. And at times I've seen him tell him, hey, don't do that. Don't talk to me like that again. I will have your ass put in the hole. He knows right then and there. I backed up off of her. She just put me on blast in front of everybody. Don't try that again. But we get this shorter black woman that's probably, let me think back on this woman. We might, she might be five foot even. Might have been 4'10", 4 4'11". 4 and the woman is legitly shaped. She looked like a marshmallow that started to melt. If you're watching, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be honest here. 
This woman was in no way, shape, or form attractive. This woman had body odor, and you could 100% take a guess that she had hair on her legs, hair under her arms, not an attractive woman at all, but Capo dealt with all the counselors, but I noticed real quick that he was dealing with her a lot. Nobody else was like, let me take that back. Let me backtrack. Yes, there were other dudes that tried to holler. There were dudes that were gunner down. You know what gunning is. Dudes would be in the bathroom and she would be sitting there with Capo talking, smiling, laughing, Capo spitting that good game with his pretty ass so. And there'd be dudes in the bathroom looking over the door. That's how crazy prison is. Sometimes there would be three, four dudes standing side by side looking over the door. Going in on this woman. Going in on the woman in the control booth. Some of these dudes are real sick, twisted, and need help. Coppa was sitting there talking to her. As soon as she came in, she would come in and ask for him by his real name. I'm not going to put his real name out there, but she would come in and say, Hey, such a... I need you to come to the front. That was nothing out the ordinary. These counselors use these inmates to control the other inmates and get things done. Make announcements, do this, do that. Come on, make it easy for all of us. Nobody has to get ridden up. Yes, they wrote each other up. It comes a time where it becomes obvious that this is not just program related. She went from coming in in times when she shouldn't really be in there. We're not programming. There's no program going on. Why is the counselor in here? It's after hours. Can't do what we would usually do because now the counselor's in the bill. But she would just sit up front and her and Coppo would talk while dudes got their sexual predator status on and peeked from behind the doors, right? Well, the next thing we know, she's coming and getting him, and they had a building called Smith Hall. Smith Hall is the high school, pretty much that's the equivalent of a high school inside of a penitentiary. This is where all most of the trades were. This is where the counselors and the guys that were on this hierarchy would go up and sit down in the cubicles. I had done it myself at one point. I told y'all that story. But she's starting to pull him out more and more, and she's taking him up to this building called Smith Hall. And he would disappear sometimes for... 30, 45 minutes. Well, in the time she's pulling him out, a lot of the other counselors have left and went home for the day. So Smith Hall does not have all these activities going on. They had the art program, different college courses, and people up there all the time. It was very, very active building. She's coming in, getting this guy, and pulling him out random times. Up until the point that the guards are like, hey, your shift is over. You need to go home. Here, with your little funny built ass. It starts to draw attention. Inmates have the, and I'm not talking about convicts, inmates, guys that don't fully play by the rules and don't know how to move within the prison system, will always reveal their hand. Capo is a gang member. The last thing he should ever do is tell anybody else what he has going on because it is going to spread like a wildfire. I'm not a gang member. I'm not gang affiliated. It did not take long for me, first of all, to pick up on what's going on because I've seen it happen a million times. When I see a guy hanging out at the control booth, talking to the slot to the female officer time and time again, and I got to walk up and ask him to move, and he gets an attitude with me, I know what's going on. He's spitting his game. Capo was then went and told his little homeboys, his little gang members that, yo, we knocking shorty off. What you think she be doing when she calls me out of here we go up there and we go in that little art class and we close that door and we turn the lights off and man people we lock the door from the inside and yes this place actually it's one of the few prisons i've seen that had locking doors and that's because they had art supplies in it so you wouldn't want inmates to just be able to walk up when nobody was looking and open the door and go in and steal the art supplies so they would lock the doors well if the doors weren't locked you could go in there and then lock it from the inside he's telling his other dudes, we go up there when ain't nobody really up there. And the door's got a, a plexiglass slot in it so that if a guard walks by, he can see in it. But when you turn the lights off, it's pitch black. Man, I have her up there. I'll be having her on the desk, beating it up. Have her bent over, beating it up. Have her down on her knees. You know, I ain't got to get too graphic with it. We're all hearing about this. Well, him doing that, now other dudes start trying to shoot their shot. Oh, she's giving it up like that? He's made it out to make the rest of the population think like she's just wide open and she's some smut. But in reality, he's not kicked so much game to this woman that she likes him. She's like catching feelings for him. So now he's done got her like they always get him. Hey, start off with something small, right? Can you bring me in a lighter? I ain't asked you to do nothing crazy. Just bring me in a lighter. 
Next thing you know, she smokes in a lighter. He gives it a couple days. Hey, you know I smoke. Mom, bring me a pack of Newport 100 cents. Just bring me one Newport 100. He's testing the waters. She starts to bring him in. Next thing you know, guys are in the bathroom, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and the whole dorm smells like weed. Capo is on. This lady is just supplying him with whatever he asked for. So now you got dudes that are trying to holler at her, and she's shunning dudes. Don't come at me like that. So a couple different dudes had told her, when I know what's going on with you and old boy, what you mean don't come at you like that? So now she leaves, comes back the following day, tells Capo what's going on. Now the violence starts. Mind you, now he is an active gang member. He is a blood. So they go to the dudes that are pushing up on him, catch him in the bathroom, catch him on the rec yard, and just smash him all the way out. They're beating dudes up. I'm talking, I think it was three different situations I've seen where somebody got beat up behind trying to holler at the Oompa Loompa, right? Capo is not only trying to protect his investment, he's also trying to keep going what he's got going. He doesn't care what she looks like. He ain't looking at her face. It's dark in that classroom. He ain't looking at her body. I've told y'all, it always ends bad. We all knew what they were doing. We all knew they were going in the art classroom. We knew that at the moment she came and got him and they left there, they went up there, that he was going up there and he was going to pound town. He's about to, you know what I mean? He's about to get it in. The other counselors have caught wind of what's going on too. As these guys are getting beat up and going to the hole by the gangs, they're telling the guards what's going on. I tried to holler at the counselor because Capo was hollering at her. And they beat me up. The guards approach her about it. And she, no, nah, ain't nothing going on. But people don't know when to stop. Now I say it always ends bad. You're just That's why criminals go to jail. Because we don't stop. We just keep going and going. You get away with something once. You try it again. It becomes exciting, enticing. I got to have it. They wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. She wouldn't stop. He should have known better. He knew he was hot. He seen the way them guards were looking at him or her as they walked. He seen the way that when she walked by, other counselors would look at her and the guards would look at her little funny built ass. They knew that they were being, you know, on the verge of being caught. Did they stop? No. She comes in one evening, probably about 530, right before count, and gets Capo out, tells the officer, mark him down as being with me up Smith Hall. We need to go over some paperwork. And she takes him up out of there. Capo doesn't come back. Shift changes. Nighttime officer comes in there. And this was a cool, tall, skinny, white dude. Younger, maybe 23, 24 years old. That liked to joke around. He like indulged too much information. His name Terry. Actually a really cool dude, right? He comes Terry in and tells us, y'all boys is tripping, man. I can't believe one of y'all would even, well, what's, what's going on? Man, they got that woman out front, like in handcuffs, in tears, flipping her car inside out. Your homeboy Capo, he's over in the hole, gonna get shipped. What's going on? They was on to him. They waited till they went in that art classroom and they snuck up beside the door with the key and slid the key in the door real quick. Popped the door open, turn the light on, and their copper was with his pants down. Their Miss Squidworth was with her pants down. Just like that, she has no job. Just like that, she can no longer support her children. Her reputation as far as being a counselor or ever working anything that's got to do with counseling is now dead. Capo and all his good time and his little army of soldiers he had up underneath the other one, bye Capo, ended up getting shipped up off of there. And then they really started to buckle down for about three days. And then it would be another situation and another situation and another situation. I have got a Rolodex full of stories just like this. Countless stories. Anybody that did time up there could jump in my comment section and tell a story of when you seen a guard get caught. I saw tons. I, I can't remember. I was like a little over 18 months, close to two years I was there. I saw so many women get walked up off this place that it does not make sense. So let's recap. Going after the hot one, probably not your best option. You might get shot down. Then again, you might get on. But somebody's going to tell on you. You also run the risk of her telling on you. You go after the one that's got the lowest self-esteem, the one that doesn't get attention at home. That's who you want to go after. When it comes to getting things in, guys start with something small, and they work their way up 
to the point that once this woman got caught, they knew everything. She's catching criminal charges for everything she's brought in. Sometimes the ugliest women in those situations become the most beautiful women just due to the fact that it is someone of another gender is all that a lot of guys care about. And then you bring money into the situation where her bringing in a pack of cigarettes that's at the time six, seven dollars, that pack of cigarettes with one cigarette going for twenty dollars, well you do the man. That's four hundred dollars per pack. Or you could just sell somebody a pack four hundred dollars. All throughout this prison it was like it was like Cinemax after hours. When I'm telling you some of these dudes are sleeping with Fraggle Rock and laid up inside of a gremlin, I ain't told you no lie. That place was by far the most flooded place I'd ever been when it came to London. So with this being a later upload, that means I'm just getting home. Yes, I'm just getting home. Work for a living. It'll keep you humble. Tell you a YouTuber, why do you work? Because I'm humble. This is guaranteed to feed my family. YouTube is not. Once again, please keep Mark Ezell in your prayers. I attached his email, his cash app, if you'd like to reach out to just give him some words of encouragement. If you are in a financial position where you can help the next man, then that's up to you to do. With all that being said, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And as usual, I need to get inside to my children. But anyways, these prisons, jails, institutions, these females, they're all just crazier worlds inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.